This is a Let's Talk Urban project. Um, this is our intro to uh, Pillow Talk. Excuse the attire. Excuse the looks. Excuse the hair. Just excuse us. But this is Pillow Talk. So this is... Um, this is a conversation that me and Jerry are having um, at 2 a.m. in the morning, Pacific time. Um, but I guess you would consider it to be that talk before you go to sleep. And I brought up a, um, we brought up the topic of death. And we brought up um, where, where did, where do people go? That there isn't a, um, Jerry says there isn't a hell. And when he first said it, I'm like, she's not, what is she talking about? She's always a hell, there's a heaven and there's a hell. But her concept is that hell is here, that we are living in our own personal hells, right? Okay. Um, the hell is what we live in now. So my question to her was, if hell is here, that when you die and you're not heaven bound, where do you go? So with that said, I'm going to leave um, the um, topic open to Jerry over here on the couch. Happy New Year. And she is going to basically explain what she means by there being no um, hell and what where people go where does she think people go if they're not heaven bound well if you're not heaven bound I don't think you go anywhere I think you just your spirit is left to roam it's, it's like a, you go into a, like a purgatory sort of state but you're a hell to me is, you know, you're heaven and you're hell. We're always, if we believe what we say we believe, when we leave here, we're going to go to a better place, which, of course, would be heaven. Right? That's what we're told. That's what we're right. led to believe. Right. Any Bible study in any church that you've gone, I don't care what church, what religion, you're going to go somewhere. Right. That's better. Right. Um, as far as your hell here, I believe that you're, that this is your hell. You you go through so many things in life, good and bad. You experience a little bit of both, but your trials and your tribulations are here. You have to go through it here in order to transition into what you believe to be heaven. Okay, so, so when you die... If you're not heaven bound, you say you just you you just don't awaken um, right. for the the coming of Christ. Right. You that that's when my, that's my opinion. I don't if if you if you don't believe if you don't confess to God your your belief or whoever it is you believe in God the you know. Uh, Whoever, Buddha, whatever your belief, your faith is, if you don't profess your belief to him before you take your last breath here on earth, mm -hmm. you disintegrate into you're, nothing. You're just gonna, you're gonna stay, whether you're buried, you're you're cremated, your ashes are spread. You're not, your spirit is never going to be risen again. So you're just. If you don't ever profess to have any belief or faith, I understand. Didn't he say that when he comes in the second coming, those that believe will rise. Will rise again, again, right? Will rise again. And, uh, and if you don't believe, why would you rise again? 
Well, I was assuming that, I wasn't that, assuming that you were in hell and you're climbing out of a dungeon and you've, you've got all these demons around you. I don't believe that's... I believe that if you don't believe, you're not, you're not leaving here. Your spirit is going to stay here. It's yeah, going to but melt now, to the ground or wherever it is. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Now you confuse me because you, either you're going to disintegrate into nothing and, and never rise again mm -hmm. or you're going to roam. Which, which one is it? Is you gonna, you're never going to rise again. You're just going to disintegrate into nothing. Your, your spirit, your soul, all that just dies with your sin. That's my belief. So then there's no punishment. You've had your punishment. But what if you have lived a life where you don't get punished? Because it, the Bible says that you will answer for your sins upon death. So how are you punished if you, you don't, don't get to go to heaven. But how are but how is that punishment if you don't give a crap about going? You you, you know what I'm saying? If I'm saying, you know, I'm um I don't believe in Christ. I do. But I'm just saying if I, I'm putting myself on the I'm playing devil's advocate. <laughs> Literally. You, you you understand? And I'm saying, well, I don't believe in Christ. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in the afterlife and I don't believe in the da, 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 and that's why I'm living to the fullest now and I think I um, even with the little mini stumps that have been thrown my way I have lived a good life. I've done everything I wanted to do when I wanted to and I don't look at this as hell because I'm doing just what the fuck I want to do. Mm -hmm. You understand? So how is this hell? Based upon how you're explaining it. How is this hell? How is this hell if I think I'm living a good life? Because I don't know no other. Wait. Because I don't know no other um, good life. You understand? I don't know. I don't. I can't comprehend heaven being a good life. Because I don't even believe in it. You understand? Right. So where are the punishment for the sinners? Or... The non-believers. Well, the non-believers, I mean, they're not going to believe either way. They're not going to believe that there's a punishment. And not, if they don't believe that there's anything better, mm -hmm. they're not believing that there's a punishment. So how do you they, explain they that think. to believers? How do you grow your children into believing greater is better? The Almighty seeking is better. Having faith in God is better. How do you raise your kids to believe or raise... The same way we were all raised. You, you, you teach it through the teachings of the word of, of Christ. But, we, the Bible but, or but the word of Christ says there's a hell. You understand? Yeah, but he didn't say it was afterlife, did he? No, but you just said there was no hell. I said your hell is here. Right. You're, you're on earth. But they do say in the afterlife. They say upon death. You have two choices. You go here or there. <laughs> you say Okay, well, leaving to heaven is your option as, as far as your faith and believing in Christ. If you have no faith, what, where, where does it matter where you go? Period. But I'm not if speaking. I'm not, I'm not even speaking anymore for the hell bound. I, I'm, you understand? I'm, I'm speaking for the teachings of good and bad. Well, the teachings I feel should still could go back to the way it used to be when, when I was a kid. Of course, that's a way, way back. But even when you were a child, that you were taught, you you were sent to Bible school. You were sent to Sunday school. I mean, I know I was. I was. Then. Every Sunday I had to go. Whether my my parents never went, but I went. Well, my parents you know, never and went. I was taught what right. And I went to my mother whipped my butt. If I, I went to Catholic school. I went to Catholic church by choice because I always have been a. God seeking person. I always have been so where did a you learn it from? to be God seeking. Yeah, where did that come from? I don't where know. Was that instilled in it you? was it wasn't. My mother and father never. We not, not not a grandparent, not a aunt, no. not an uncle, not anybody. No. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. My grandmother didn't go to church, but she lived across the street from one. 
and it was uh St. Augustine's um, um, Catholic Church and it was a big pretty church and I always been drawn to church period God period the wonderment of okay, well, where who he is I think that's embedded in you I think I think it's in that I think it is I agree with that I think it's in everyone whether you fight it or accept yeah, it like I anything else I think that's why God gives us the uh, power of choice. He did create us. Right. And we have the power of choice in us from, I think, from the beginning. Yeah, we do. So, it, I think it's, like you asked, I think it's already in us. Mm -hmm. And I chose to seek it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was uh, plucked through uh, me just being a... Um, Curious person about life itself, period, right. and why people seek this and why people do this. And I want to know. I wanted to know why people lined up, like lined up, to go inside church. Mm -hmm. And it was the first church I've ever been introduced to, and which is the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And um, it was spooky, kind of. Yeah, Catholic Church can do At it. first, it was spooky because it was new. You know, all things new make you a little weary. Um, and I started getting up, like getting up, getting dressed by myself and going across the street to the church. Then um, I started going to... Um, Think the same church with my aunt Michelle because I found out that uh, my cousin Calvin went to Catholic school and we were going and that they went to church on Sunday so I started going with them to church I didn't get introduced to the Baptist church until I had to have been in high school and my friend Tracy Pugh aunt was a pastor and that was Mount Olive Baptist Church. And I was talking about the Catholic Church spooked me out. I was scared of the Baptist Church because people were running around. And, and it was a, a, a Pentecostal. And they were like running around right. the church screaming. People were passing out. Well. And um, I didn't kind of, um, I didn't kind of understand that either. But I, I never, nobody introduced me to religion. You, you, you understand? It was across the street. Well, for me growing up, it was you, you, you heard people talk of God. And in my family, not that all my family members went to church. My parents didn't go. I mean, I've been to Christian science where they don't believe in seeking medical advice. Mm-hmm. That didn't last long because the minute I called an ambulance on my father, they were at my door telling me they couldn't take him, and that didn't ride well with my mother. My mother was a Southern Baptist. My father was a Methodist. But I that's what I'm saying. Catholic. So I went where does all. the root of saying there is no hell? Because you're, you're saying when I was raised, but I wasn't raised like that. I wasn't I raised. That the, I, I believe that your hell is here on earth because it's all of your trials and tribulations that you go through in this life. I don't believe there's a person walking the face of the earth that has not experienced some type of travesty or something in their life. That, well, that we all know that. Life. We're not saying that, that. I'm not. That's not my question. My question is not that there is no suffering mm -hmm. here because we all know that and there that's is. Why I believe this is your hell. But. This being purgatory, maybe. This be a waiting ground for, for, for a choice. This being the middle of catching a bit of heaven and hell, so to speak, because fresh grace and mercies every day we're given. So that's where uh, 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 that joyful feeling when you get up in the morning uh, them days where you'd be like, you know what? 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is the day the Lord made. You know what I'm saying? And I am gonna live and bask in it. You know what I'm saying? Or those in those those uh days where you look at everyday stuff like butterflies and and you really see the joy in life. Mm -hmm. That's heaven on earth. You, mm -hmm. you you understand? So that's why I'm in kind of like in a it's an interesting view, but that's why I am questioning. I'm more so debating it that that couldn't possibly be so because there's too much heaven on earth. There's too much that's that kind of like is a smack in the face of saying that Jesus died for our sins so we could live. Because I don't think Jesus would die for a sacrifice himself for us, for us to be in hell. It, it, sacrifice himself for us to make the choices. Well, if I, you're choosing not to believe. But we're already, we already got choices. We're born with choice. I know we are. So we are, he, he couldn't have possibly have died for us to have choices because there were people here before him. Mm -hmm. You understand? That had choice. So he didn't die to have double choice. We already had choice in us anyway. So to say he died for our sins so we could live, I don't think he would die. It don't make sense to me for him to die for our sins for us to live in hell. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So why would he die so you could go to heaven or go to hell? What was that purpose for then? I think for the good and the bad, because I think there is that too in all of us. Mm -hmm. I think there is good and bad in all of us. Jesus is the core of us. He, he, he is, um, uh, in all of us. Even those who say they don't believe in Christ. Because you hear people say they don't believe in Christ, and the first time something bad happens. <laughs> Oh God, <laughs> Lord or, Jesus, I'll never do that again. Or they'll take a chance, and maybe there is a God, and they'll they have. And there's the people that will pray to God when things happen, and when they don't get the answer that they want, they turn on it. Right, but that that's neither here nor there. The 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 that's part of your the, choice. The core of Christ being in us, mm -hmm. and choice can be good and bad i think choice can be bad if you make decisions that are unlike him right right so that's what i'm saying so how 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 if i already got choice then jesus couldn't possibly have died for us to have choice he he died for our sins so how do you die for the sins of your your, your brothers and your sisters Leaving them in hell. Because it's their choice not to change the sin. There's many people walking around here that will never change their sinful way. Because they don't believe. But what they they got, don't believe that he died for that. But what that got to do with what you're saying? What that got to do with you saying that? Because that, they're making their choice. They're making their own hell right here. By not making any type of change whatsoever. But you're saying, okay, but those are those people. But what about people walking in Christ? Mm -hmm. What about people who are living right, people who are living righteous according to his word, according to, to his plan? You understand? They're the ones that go to heaven. Right, but then how are they in hell? There's going to be things in life that is a hell. You create it yourself. Now, okay, things in life that are going yes. to be a hell, yes. Yeah. But this being hell, that's two different things. No, it's my interpretation. My interpretation and yours. Well, no, I know that. I, that's not what I'm but saying. This is what, but this I'm is not what saying I'm that. Saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying. I'm not taking your your opinion. I'm I'm debating it. I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Well, if this is so, explain that. Then explain. I don't this. have an answer for that. I only have my own belief in it. Oh. That then that's then that's an answer. I, I don't have an answer that I can sit down and, and scientifically break it down to. This is just my personal opinion, my personal take that your hell is here on earth. That when you leave this earthly body, mm -hmm. this temple that we're walking around in right. right now, 
when it no longer exists. The choices I've made here and the hell that I've lived in or the things I've experienced, if I didn't find any type of spirituality or faith in God to bring me from here it. to here. Right. Because we all come this far by faith. That's that's the song we always sing. Well, if everybody's know? coming. And, and I, I truly believe that. If you have no faith, mm -hmm. you, you're not going to know any difference anyway. Because you, you, you're not, you're not, you don't care. You know what I'm saying? If you have no faith that there's something better, if you don't believe what you've been told, or read, or heard across the street, if we don't believe what we say we believe, then what's the point? I don't know. I don't. I'm just looking at it different. I because what's the point is because we're 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 people too, and we're human too. Right. And. Uh, what you say don't necessarily have to be so because I could be surrounded by a whole bunch of negative stuff and church wasn't across the street. We'll just mm -hmm. say, we'll just say, uh, 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 an alley with, uh, that I watch people get mugged in or, mm -hmm. uh, drugged in or homeless people living in starving in scenery that was across the street for me. You understand? Mm -hmm. And in my household were demons. In my household were not God-fearing people. Were people who instilled in me there is no Christ. Mm -hmm. you, you, under, you, you understand? Then the teachings are not really there. And so I won't really know about choice. You, you know what I'm saying? I, I really won't know about... Uh, 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 there being choice because what's instilled in me is to not believe. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't understand if you are a um, if you are walking in Christ even though that's your choice you're walking in Christ and you're living righteous I know you're still going to go through stuff mm -hmm. because that's what keeps faith it's the birth of what faith is mm -hmm. for you to go through stuff and still be optimistic that there is a greater, there is a better. And I, I get all that. But if I'm walking in Christ and I'm here living right and I'm getting more right than wrong, or should I say getting more blessings than not, that was my debate about they're not being, uh, this not being hell. It could be hell-like, but I I was just trying to understand what you meant by, I was really trying to see your view. Mm -hmm. I do see it all the way up until you not being at, be able to explain the faith part of it. But I guess that's what faith is, unseen. Believing in the unseen. Okay, but my faith is my faith is that I know when I leave here, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna lay here and never be risen again. Right. I I have the faith that I know I'm going to heaven. Oh, we're not talking about you that know. though. We're not saying that. We never even ever debated that you weren't. The debate was that those who don't go to heaven mm -hmm. just be here. Chilling in the dirt. Okay, well, in your opinion, where do they go? I think they go to hell. Okay, and where is that? I don't know. I what, just, what is, I think there is, is a place. Where is your concern? It's, it's a hell for I think that, eternity? I think there's a hell for eternity. I think there is a forever suffering. I think there is a, see here we suffer, and then we don't, and then we suffer, and then we don't. Mm -hmm. You understand? I think there is a true hell mm -hmm. that you will forever suffer there is no good there mm -hmm. is no break there is no time out for goodness you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. there is no chance for you to redeem yourself because right. you truly at the end of your last breath said fuck it yeah you know what i'm saying and i don't want to be forgiven because everything i did i did because i was living and i don't care about heaven or whatever 
just let me go. And wherever I, I go. Basically, it's it's each individual's interpretation of hell. Whether it's right now, when you die, you just don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's hell. That that's, could be that's hell. My, that's my interpretation. Mm -hmm. You don't go nowhere. So you just, you don't get punished, you just get a treat. Well, I, I wouldn't consider that a treat. No, I'm just, no, <laughs> it is. Heaven is a treat. Yeah, yeah, heaven. If, That's if what you, I'm saying. You, have you either you have mean, nothing. Yeah, you have nothing. Or you or have a treat. Right. No, I. Mm. But that's my interpretation. No, I know. You know. I'm just saying but for yours me. Yours is you have the treat or you. Have the suffering. Worse, you suffer worse than you may have in the worst predicament in this life. No, you suffering. You, you are yeah. suffering. Suffering, yeah, for eternity. For, for. When I say you are suffering for eternity, I mean you are forever in torment. There, there is no break. There is no sunshine. There is no... Every, not to me, that's my interpretation of not being risen again. But see, here is... Oh, okay. All right. My interpretation of never, never ever to rise again... To meet Christ is, that's, that's is hell. hell. That would be hell. For believers. Especially, especially if... If you have any knowledge of it, you know, yes, this physical body's dead, mm -hmm. but the spirit has knowledge, and you see everybody around you rising up and leaving, and you're stuck here to never go ever. See, now now that's different. You know what I'm saying? Now that makes more sense. That's because you're saying at the end of time that at the end of time, mm -hmm. where all is done. Mm -hmm. And kingdom comes, right? Mm -hmm, right. All is done. Kingdom comes, and um, everybody's <laughs> like rising, <laughs> and you like know. um, whoa, 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 where you going? Yeah, like, where are you going? Like, well, oh, you, we going to heaven? You didn't want to go. And you be like, well, well why? Ain't? But my, you didn't want to go. Why well, my feet is on the ground still? Like, yeah. why am I still? But see, that's here. my interpretation. But see that you didn't say that in the beginning. Okay, but now that's why I'm, the okay. the more you dig into people's thought that person is also thinking and revelation is brought up revelations shall I say are revealed the, the revealing of your core thought so the core of your thoughts are that at the end of time when all is done when nothing walks this earth and 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 the coming of Christ yeah, you hear the sound of the trumpet is and now the clouds break loose and you see him walking down out of the sky. So you know, so the image has been embedded in it, right? Into your brain. So at the end of time, and all is dead, and Christ rises, we rise. Those going to heaven, which mm -hmm. would be us. <laughs> rising, yeah, I got just much <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Else. <laughs> right, and going to heaven, but those who chose not to ask for forgiveness or not to say, I believe, I have this much yeah. mustard seed, mustard seed, and that's very tiny. Yes, you need a microscope to see right. mustard seed. So, a mustard seed of faith. You ain't asking for a lot. We all, you got the potential. You got the potential to get your. Butt up out the ground and or wherever right. and right. Uh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Well, and you know, then when you get to the gate might be a different story. When you get so to the here gate. is hell. Yeah. So here is hell. But here's not hell now. Here is hell. If you get stuck here, right? Then that's different. Okay. You know, now, you know but, I have a hard time explaining things. But to that you. no. We have different. No, different it ain't about explaining it to me. Right. It's about. Knowing the base of what you mean, you understand? Because we dug the base out. We dug it down to clarity. We dug it down to you being it being clear to me and also to yourself because you didn't even really articulate that right in your debate. I never was good at debating. <laughs> no, I mean, and then it, it ain't just no, the, the debate. It's also about being able to. Have a clear, conscious mind about what you're saying, mm -hmm. and say, "This is what I mean." This is. And so there are many people 
throughout the years when I've discussed this, they don't, you know, they think I'm crazy or whatever. Because maybe you, you didn't explain that ending part. Maybe not. Maybe because not. that don't sound crazy. That sounds like makes a whole lot of a hell lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Like that makes so much sense that it's everything rises. And there's no life here, and you're stuck here. That is hell. And, and everything good is gone. Nothing but suffering will still be here. So everything that we did go through, that everybody went through, is stuck here. All the bad, because we're gonna shed that. Yeah. So once we shed that and drop it all here, and you still stuck here, then yeah. That's what I mean. Then that is forever torment. So now we just blended the two, the the two debates basically. Yeah. And and came together and it all made one big religious sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pillow talk, guys. That's that kind of is what faith, religion, is all about. And no matter what. Um, religion you study, we kind of, we had two different views. We've been raised two different ways. You were kind of raised two different ways. I'm raised two different I ways. A lot of different ways. You know what I mean? And, and, and church-wise. Church-wise. I church was, views. A lot of, you understand? Lot of I'm talking ways. about, I don't mean that. I mean what was embedded from your mother right. and your father. And then what was embedded in me from my sight and my um then my peers because i didn't have it in the house saying my mother wasn't saying it's sunday and i ain't going but you going you know yeah, mine was. or or you know, or you have that father that don't go but your mother is up yeah. every sunday you know what i'm saying that's saying uh-uh all of y'all you ain't going yeah. uh here, take this list of chores because while we praising the lord you will be doing this yeah, no, yeah I you understand no so there is no I didn't have that in my household. Sunday was another day. I mean, I, I didn't. I, I probably didn't start experiencing that until I was like six or seven. But some lady came through the neighborhood, wanted to take the kids to church on Sunday school, and that's how my mother wrote me into it. You know? Oh, there's a guy. There was a guy that used to come, and um, I forget what the name of this church was. Red Oak or something. And he was a um uh. White pastor used to come into the neighborhood, take all the kids, pick them up on this big ass school bus, and the kids yeah, used to be station wagon. oh, the kids used to be pumped like kids that probably would have never got introduced to church yeah. would get up and be waiting. We used to watch them because Jameer, um, not Jameer, yeah, Jameer used to go, and and the kids went for the snacks. Yeah. At first, because they would be like, oh, we have treats, and we have this, and we put on plays, and you thinking fun, 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 and and the kids would get hooked and going, and end up going. Even after they get there, and they know their service, and their teachings, and they still went, because the interest still lied there once they, you know, got them to get on that bus with the snacks. Because he sure enough used to come to the neighborhood <laughs> with the snacks. And the promise you come to church Sunday, right? We're going to come pick you up. I think for some of us, because this lady was Pentecostal, so, you know, and, and my mother referred to it as holiness, um, I think some of us went just because it was entertaining. You know, they get the talking in tongues and holy dancing and wigs flying off their heads. And, uh, you know, music. music. I went for the music because the music was good. You know, but... It also introduced me to the spirit. I think I got hooked on. I think I got hooked on Baptist Church. On the how do you get there? I think that's where my love for Katia be. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you get to that place? Mm-hmm. I want that place. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? I want that joy. Even though it looked crazy and they just be falling out and... The ushers just be famine, you see? and you be seeing people yeah. going into convulsions and ashalabaka ashalabaka. Yeah, you be I like, know. what? Yeah. What's she saying? Like, I want to know. I want to know that language. I want to know what she's right, saying. Right. I think the uh, uh, 
I think religious religion can also be, um, I don't know. Uh, I think it also makes people seek even more what they don't understand. And I think that's what my fascination was with the church. Now, Catholic church to me was pomp and circumstance and, you know, ceremony and, you know. You, Ritual. You rang a bell and you stood up and you rang a bell and you kneeled and you, you know, the incense yes, was honey. flying and the, you know, yes. everything. You and know, the, it, my mother always said she couldn't be Catholic because she couldn't get up and down fast enough. Like, you know, yeah, she'd you be know. like, it needs for a minute. Like, and then some oh. of the things with the Catholic church just seemed like, you know, it was, it, for me, some of the Catholic belief, not the belief, but within the church confused me about what the Bible said. Because in the Bible it says you shall not bow down before any graven image. Where in the Catholic church, every time you bow, there's a there's a uh, graven angel. image of Jesus, <laughs> or a graven image of the mother, the Virgin Mary, yes. or, you know, or Pope Paul John the 26th, and you know, whatever. Images there's everywhere. Images everywhere, and I thought... Mm. That's not what the Bible says. Faces. That's not what King right. James Version said, you know, because I grew up on King James right. Version. All right. May not <laughs> understand the D and the thou and the this and the that, but until I got older and they came out with the new editions of the Bible and mm. actually you could understand a my lingo, you know, or my way of talking. But what about interpretation? You know, uh, uh, interpretation is perception. Right. So, so, as a child, when you heard these things, the, the part of the Ten Commandments, you shall not bow before any graven image. And here the Catholic Church has all this stuff. It was confusing, but I was still fascinated by mm -hmm. it because of all the ceremony and the robes and the, you know, it was like, oh, it was so solemn. And you walked in, the church was always cold and you felt like, oh, God must be here. <laughs> <laughs> because it got to be for people to still be sitting here as you cold know, as it is. But then... The other spectrum for me was, you know, because I, I was baptized in the African, the AME church. Mm -hmm. And being around Pentecostal and all these different religions that I went through growing up. For me, church, the, the comfort I found in church was through the music. Someone start playing that piano. They'd hit a certain key and then certain Ooh, would come on. You get the you know, um, like goosebumps. You, you, and... you, know, you get the tears and you'd be rocking back and forth <laughs> in, your, in the choir stand. And <laughs> that, and the preacher start preaching and sweating and humming and doing whatever. That's when I could feel the spirit within my soul mm. start stirring up. To get up in a choir stand and to sing a song, to lead a song, and get a reaction from the people within the church mm. that you were singing that song to the point mm. it brought them to some kind of tears or whatever. Girl, you know you ain't brought nobody to no tears with no song. Yes, I did. I could sing back in the day. I can't now because I smoke too much. But to me, that that's what filled my spirit. I like the Bible thumping and the preaching where they're sweating and and, I, I, and all that kind of stuff. I, I want to see a preacher get into what he's preaching about. I didn't like, as my mother would refer to it, as dead mother music. Ooh, it was so... In him, you know, with him, like, you know, no, the no Holy beat Spirit. To it, no, nothing where you could just say, you know, ah, get my man. spirit going, you know. I what? I never... I used to be like, boring. it was like, okay, hallelujah, hallelujah, you know, <laughs> like, amen. that didn't, that didn't stretch <laughs> my soul at all, <laughs> you know, but, um, I don't know, it's everybody's, everybody's perception, I mean, you know, you go through things, you know, my thing is, you know, with, like, when we're going back to, um, you speaking about, uh, versions of the Bible, it, I think that also keeps us uh, seeking the word or seeking um, knowledge in the word because you know that these 
it may not be we may not be pulling from it what what it's saying mm-hmm. because when you start thinking about versions you start thinking about bibles that are found now that are thousands and thousands and thousands of years old and uh you, you always heard about there being a Bible, um, well, I did anyway, uh, being a, a Bible that um, uh, is the oldest form and it was found in Africa. Mm-hmm. And it, then you start thinking about the King Celestia and, and all these different versions of one God. Right. I think that's what keeps uh, people... Uh, seeking. But it's okay, even when you bring up one God. My interpretation of God isn't a white man with blue eyes and a beard and long brown hair. The Bible I always read said that he had hair as a lamb's wool but then that's Jesus. You know, okay. But to me, Jesus is not a white man. Jesus would be a black man in my in my interpretation of what the word says. You know, but then you can you can even go further back where people wanted to talk about the Bible in general. How do you know that that's all true? It was written by man. Exactly. You know, so there's another argument. People. But I, I think that's why people don't go anymore by by um, color. Because now when you go in church, they don't talk about Jesus being a black man. They don't even care about his hair being of wool and his his skin being the color of copper thrown in a fire. I just, no, they don't even talk about him in the church now. They I've, I really, I've never heard them say, there you go. Christ, black man, no, follow I mean, him. When you when you look at a Bible and it has pictures in it, but see, not anymore. Yeah, that's true. Not anymore. Not anymore. You don't see the face of Christ. You do no. not see the face of Christ, and even in newer portraits, you don't see. You see, um, but look like it could be man, but there's more light. That's true. Than I think anything else, but versions of the Bible, I did not mean like um, where they depict Christ to be this look like this, and uh, I mean versions of the Bible of stories being told. And like you said, how how much of this is true? Because there's debates all over the place that says that the Bible is not interpreted properly. And that's why right. there are so many different versions of, of, of the Bible. But we got off subject and, but Which it was, yeah, we are, I, you know, we to the lefters, um, uh, uh, I guess, cause the talk is a talk, is a talk, is pillow talk. <laughs> so, so, um, we're gonna um shut down for the um our our first um introduction to um pillow talk. There will be um more to um come. Um, I guess we'll use this as a form of a commercial, basically, on what it will be. Setting will be different, but this topic came up so strong that I was like hold your horses don't talk about nothing else <laughs> her phone's dead my phone's dead iPads, the iPads are dead <laughs> no my iPad's charging in the bathroom but yours is dead and so the first thing I grabbed was my laptop because um, uh, if we didn't get it taped we would have never been able to have this conversation we would have never been able to get this tape shall i say so um it was a conversation that was not wasted 
and um, not that our conversations are wasted. Well, they are if we don't get to share them. Because <laughs> you know I want to be right. <laughs> <laughs> so um we're gonna end it um on that note um it is um the new year and this will be our first introduction shall i say or just a pinch of what's to come for uh pillow talk uh even though pillow talk will um be a combination of us talking and we will also have some guests on the show. Um, we are kind of figuring out if we're going to do a Google chat or we're going to do a Skype. But it will be a dual um, screen and it will be, we will have a guest that will um, kind of talk with us as um, a group. Whether they are a couple that live in the same household or a single person who needs to have pillow talk and ain't nobody else around. <laughs> so, <laughs> we will serve as, as that other pillow. Uh, thanks for listening and um, enjoy the new year and good night. <laughs>